about it? Yeah. All right. So I'm basically just going to, this is something I kind of put together that I'm going to show my boys too. So it's going to, you know, be kind of pretty simple. Um, but um, Mike, you and I had a conversation a while back. I think Randy was involved in it too. We talked about motion. You know, you wanted to learn a little bit about motion. And so this is kind of how, this is exactly how we do it. And, you know, so basically, you know, we're going to exp explain why we use the motion, what types of motion and um, what kind of rules or what we're kind of looking for or, I guess you say what we include with the motion, you know, whether it be changing signals or where, where how does it change the play, those kind of rules. So the types of motions we use, we use about six motions. We use jet, shift, a shift motion, a snake motion, a jump motion, uh, orbit, and a push motion. And um, these are, I mean, this is all hand signals for us. So we, we actually built in a, an extra signal for each motion that we would usually go formation, then the motion, and then the play. So typically, if we, for example, we go shift motion, we'll start off with the with the first um, with the first formation signal, and then I will show the motion signal. Then I will show what kind of what formation I want you to motion into. So it would be, you know, ace shift to early, uh, and then give the play, and then jump motion, which I'm going to go over all these uh, individually, and then we got orbit and push. I guess to say. So the four main reasons we use the motion uh, is to obviously change the look of the offense versus what the defense sees pre-snap on any given play. So just want to change what they're seeing and see how they adjust, see if they even adjust. Sometimes they don't even adjust at all uh, and see what we can try and take advantage of based on the looks that we're giving them. Uh, to gain a numbers advantage, a certain side of the, uh, the formation. Um, to move our best play, playmaker or playmakers around to give them the ball in different and creative ways. So, you know, kind of like Mike and I are the same. We have a that certain guy that we try and move around the field quite a bit uh, for us. I think Mike, you said it's your H, right? Well, we call it we call it our A our A back. Yeah, he's okay, our, yeah. Our, our our next best athlete, and he's yeah, he's, so, on the left, he's on the left inside receiver. So we we like yeah. to move that guy around. Basically the same as me, and I move that move that guy around. That's typically my my fastest guy, the best athlete in space. Um, so he can, he's kind of that hybrid player between uh, running back and receiver that we put in that yeah. slot. So we move him around. Uh, we also use motion as a decoy, control the eyes of the defense and attack where the focus is not. So you know once we see how they're how they're uh, adjusting the motion or if they're really really following motion, we'll use it as a decoy and attack another attack uh, the opposite side of where the motion is going. All right, so the first motion is our jet motion. Let's move this around so you can see a little bit better here. All right, so <clears throat> most of us use jet motion, uh, but it's typically just for our H, our H receiver, our slot receiver. Uh, QB signals the motion in. It's a full speed motion across the formation, aiming. We had the uh, the motion man move, aim about one yard in front of the quarterback because we do a handoff. We don't do a, a little pop pass. I would like to do the pop pass, but. Every time I've tried it, just the time, just the timing has not been right. So I haven't been brave enough to call it. Um, during the jet motion, one of the three things can happen depending on the play call. What wide receiver either either receives the handoff or pop pass. Uh, the receiver is either the decoy, and the jet is then handed off to either a running back gets the, the handoff. Type that up wrong. Or the wide receiver fakes getting the ball, but then receives a pass on the opposite side of the formation, almost as a screen outlet. Uh, to outflank the defense. So essentially, we would just have them run over here and then quickly turn around and get a almost like a real quick, uh, arm, I guess you would call it just like a little push push motion screen pass out on the outside out of his jet motion. Question. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. You know me, I'm always interrupting. Oh, no, no, go for it. I want you to. How do, how do you, how does your quarterback, I mean, I know you signal this, the, your motion in. How, how does the quarterback put him in motion? I'm just interested you, to know. You're right. going to see it right here, actually. Yeah, I got oh, two little watch, clips. Oh, here. I got to watch some more of your films. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The jumping Wait, motion. I, mean, I, I, I'm I know. I'm just messing with you, man. I know. I got you. Hey, At least when I, 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 I I'm, all, I I'm always on Jason every week about get 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 a film or a clips or something. Uh, hey, uh, games is what he's. I'm always messing with him on that. <laughs> I, I I promise you, Mike. I tried to find the stillest clip I could find. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that's the one thing I got to work on, and you know that's one of my biggest work on is is getting a good camera guy. 
All right, so here, this one right here, I have two examples here. This one is the, the straight up just jet jet sweep, and this one right here would be the, the fake in the jet sweep to uh, to an inside zone. So hopefully they play good enough. Did it stop on me? Yeah, I think I think um, I was into the clip. Oh, there he is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The quarterback does wave him on, so he he, he gets into his cadence. So he points at, and then, him. He, then then he points at him, or, or kind of waves him on. I mean, I get kind of give the quarterback the freedom, you know, whatever he wants to do with that. Usually, he just tells him to come here. Yeah, that's what, I got you. Okay, and that's how we do it. I mean, we just point. Yeah. At him. You don't have to. What happens? <laughs> know what happened there? All right, so then I'll just midway through the clip like that. Gotcha. I'm just going to go from right here. So again, we, we, with, with this is, you know, our motion man, that, that the guy receives the handoff in this clip and, and the guy that's <laughs> making here, he's, he's our best athlete. So eventually after defenses started seeing, we were, they were keen on him. We started using him as decoys and this is what exactly what this is for here. So. I keep looking at this big old guy in that first, uh, go, go back. Okay. That big old dude, that big old dude right here in the first clip. That's by the big, big old, big old guy of your huge uh, on the sideline. Oh, we are you looking at right, right here? We're, we're... Go, go, go back, go, go back, just a second. Get, go back. That guy. Oh, uh, this one. All right, I'm sorry, I'm messing up your presentation. That is a big dude right there. He didn't. He barely played for me. He's he's real raw, so he'll be, he'll be playing a lot next year. Uh, you're he, fine. He, he was a seventh grader. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, seventh grader. All right, mm -hmm. and this one right, this right here is a little tag we put onto it. So we're gonna we're essentially gonna fake the jet, and then we're gonna fake the zone, and we're actually gonna hit a a backside slant right here to this receiver. Nice, straight route, good call. That is really good. Don't know why it stopped him in mid clip though. I apologize for that. Jason, can I ask a serious question? Go for it. And this is just my thoughts on because I do this exact same thing, but mm -hmm. off of this slant, if this was trips and you yeah. sit and you send your guy in motion, what's the number two guy going to do? So, why well, is he are you, are you referring to running jet on a trips? Yeah, uh, so if you're say your trips left and your H is over here and you're going H jet in my terminology, H jet or H fly mm -hmm. in this terminology, uh, do you have your Next number two receiver or anything off of this, or do you actually? Do actually, we don't even run, we haven't even ran jet out of out of our trips formation. It's basically just straight out of two by two. Okay, I've, I've been want, I've been, no, you're you're fine. I've been wanting to mess with it. I really have. <clears throat> I just haven't figured out a way, or I guess an an area where I'm comfortable or how how to be comfortable to run it out of trips because running running that jet away from the trips towards that single receiver. I'm kind of I'm kind of still kind of skewed on how I would want to block that because most of the time, say for example, we had trips trips right right here. If I'll just show you this, right. Um, a lot of times, what they would do is they would drop that backside backer right here and almost be like a rush man. And my would only have my single receiver here with a corner, so I'm trying to thinking how would I block that if you know a, a lot of times I have the running back on trips on the same side as the, as the trip side, so so he's not going to be really much of a a lead blocker for for the Jets, so I'm still trying to toy with that. So I actually haven't ran it too much out of trips. Okay, sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. I appreciate the questions because you really. No, I, just see, I just see things sometimes. It's like, hey, <laughs> if I'm doing this, because I've, as I've shared with you three guys before, you know, we faced the the same offense and same defense for two weeks, two hundred schools in town. They run the varsity stuff. But I just try to put something different that they haven't seen that they don't do, you know what right. I'm saying? And so, so with our, with our jet motion, our, our main goal here is to try and get these linebackers to move laterally. We want them, we want them getting side to side. Even if it's just one or two steps, to one side, if we see that, that opens up the zone behind it. If we don't see that they're really hardly adjusting at all to the, to the jet, we'll just keep running the jet over and over again. Like whether this guy flies around and chases him or we're, you know, those are all the things we're looking for. Um, typically, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but, I very rarely will see a guy chase all the way across the formation. And a lot of times when they go in motion, they'll call out the motion, but then they don't readjust on the opposite side. So, you is know. This the, is this the 4-2, basically? What's that? 
Say what one more time. Is this a four two? Was this the odd front? Do you remember? They were. I mean, they had they had essentially three down the linemen, but they, I mean, they were they were sending five every play. Okay. Yeah, they had three three guys with hands in the dirt, but then they would they would send about two more linebackers, and they and they kind of switched it up, you know, where they were sending them. I mean, because it looks like they're loading up the box, which is why we called this slap because we saw all this open space right here. No great call. Guess so. Out. You want to see that again or not? Or we good? I see that. I want to watch the receiver. <laughs> see the plays. Back fake. Sorry. We don't have any receivers looking like that either. He's only a seventh grader. Jeez. See, so, like I was saying, this this guy right here. Well, actually, my court, my running back, my quarterback, this player, this receiver, which is our best athlete, and him are all seventh graders. Gee, so you got all those back? Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be talented. Now our our size up front is going away, so we're gonna have to redevelop some linemen. It's a nice route, good stuff. I love it. Yeah, why it's telling me that? Come on, finish the finish the clip. Yellow technology. Stuff. <laughs> I know, right? All right. So this is the one, Mike. You were, you were kind of, you and I were going back and forth about this. Is our shift motion here. So shift motion changes the formation pre-snap. Um, we want to snap the ball. I got the notepad. See, I got it. <laughs> we want, we want to snap the ball before the defense has much time to adjust. So in other words, we're going to shift. Uh, so for example, like you see here, we'll shift from a two by two to a three by one. I know it looks like he just keeps going, but he's actually just stopping and he's actually getting reset. Um, we're going to leave off here. However, the motion man needs to reset before the ball is snapped. Uh, we are paying attention to how defense reacts. We can shift and, uh, and in and out of any formation. Rules, concepts, and responsibilities do not change. So this is, so this is how it works. So if we want to say, for example, we start two by two, like or this, which is our ace, and we want to shift to early. Because I know a lot of this, I'll show you a couple um, other pictures of it. I don't have any actual film with this one, but so what we would do, you know, before we enter any motion, we would, we would install our base concepts, you know, stick, corner, forward, so, the, you know, the, the basic stuff. And we, we would show it out of ace and show it out of early and late. So they knew all the responsibilities. So for example, um, in early, if we called early stick, right, running back is always swinging away from the trips always that's his responsibility all right and then our middle receiver is always running the stick route and our inside receiver which is our h is always running that flat route and then our outside receiver on early would be y always running the middle. so say for example like you see in this diagram here we call ace and then we go ace shift early stick right well they know that they, they the kids have to know first that we're starting in ace but that's just the starting point. We're shifting to early, and then we're running stick right. So all all they need to think is okay. Just because we're running, we're an ace. The, the the play is early stick right. So if they remember what is my responsibility in early stick right, then that's the that's the play. You see how that works? But he's going to actually stop and and yeah, he's going to stop and he's going to he's going to get reset. Stop and stay a thousand count. Mm -hmm. Y'all just work on that and practice to get the mess. Yeah, yeah, we practice on getting the time here because again, you know, they're more than likely going to readjust. Now, I'm not the defense I trip. There's just generic defense. You know, we we saw kind of a um, a variety of coverages against our trips. You know, a lot of times they would drop a safety down, and they would have no safety in the middle of the field. And then when, once we started seeing that, and this again, this backer, if he, if, if this H went in motion, this backer moved back down to an almost essentially a fifth lineman, and they're having this corner out here on an island. We saw that, and we started we started hitting our you know our single receiver quite a bit. Um, but yeah, this motion receiver always so he becomes the inside receiver on the trips ace yep. whatever early yep. okay. Yeah, and, he, and, and H is always H is always going to be the inside receiver on on early or late. He's always going to, Z is always the middleman, okay. and so the rules don't change. So now if we went from early and shifted to ace, and then say for example we would go, we'll just we'll just give a main you know we'll go ace shift or excuse me early shift ace stick right. We'll say stick right. So he's essentially just motioning over over to here. 
and now he's backside, and we're running a stick right here. So stick, there's the vertical, and he would, then he knows that if it's a, we go into ace, we're running a stick right. He's swinging out here, and he's part of the concept. And then he just becomes a backside one step slant. So again, they have to remember, okay, a few things. Yeah, you got to gotcha. remember where you start and where you finish. Yep. And, and so those are things that we work on because obviously. This past season, I wanted to implement motion a lot sooner than when I did, you know, with, with COVID and everything. It threw us out of whack. Um, motion is typically one of the things I do early. Now, jet motion is the very first one we put in. But then I put the shift motion in next. And it's – and they just, you know, just constantly going over. All right, what is the play call? What's your responsibility? So we, we go through a lot of times in, in practice, you know, before we even run a play, uh, if, we're, if we're in group or in team, you know, we're just – we will call out the play without a defense there. And we'll say, well, what's your responsibility? We'll just go down the line. What's your responsibility? What's your responsibility? They have to mount the responsibility. And we, and we do that over and over and over again. <laughs> so then once we implement the motion say, okay, what's your responsibility after the motion? And you'll just do that, bring all your skill guys and you'll just have this. Uh, that's your yep. operation for that day. There we go, Kerry. Yeah. Well, no, this is, this is exactly, you know, this is, you know, I'm glad he brought that operation for you because I'm going to kind of, use that to kind of review this it would be like a 10 minute period, you know, before right. we really get practice going, yeah. but you'll notice here too. And I'm going to show you here in the next clip um, that most of the motions are going to the right. Well, in our, when our ACE formation, we actually have a formation where we actually flip it. So we call it ACE flip. And I, I'm trying to keep some of the lingo the same as the high school feed into. Uh, so if we call ACE flip, that essentially just takes these two receivers right here flips him over here and their rules don't change. He's still off the line. He's still on the line. And these guys go over here and Z would still be on the line and, and Y would still be off the line. So just, right. and then, so now we can motion it to the left. So now we can go from ACE and go into late and all the rules and everything just don't change. And that you can see right here. It's hard to see. So again, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any, Video clips of this one. Got you, but yeah, I got, I got, I got you, got you. But I mean, the big thing is just remembering that hey, just because we're starting a certain formation does not mean that's that's the play we're going to run the formation on, or that's the formation we're going to run the play at. And so this 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 motion really helps a lot. Um, it's, it's real key for us, especially when we're trying to figure out how they were adjusting and 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 um, what they would do with certain formations. So that we knew, okay, if we wanted to isolate our, you know, that one receiver that you liked, we would we would shift and we would go, we would start an ace and then shift early, and that would isolate him one on one with the corner, because we knew that they would drop that safety down to take in the H. Do you play safety with the H going across? Say what? Do you play fake just like you would give on jet sweep to your H or whoever you have coming in motion? Uh, the only, the only, the only, the only play fake we really use right now is that jet sweep. Is that jet? Yeah, that, that's the only play fake we really use. <laughs> because this, he, he's just coming across, and when, like you would normally just see like regular players just shift from one side. It, it's not, it's not a real fast motion, but it's not real super slow either. I mean, he's getting across formation in a good beat, but you know he's not, he's not looking for uh, a handoff or anything. He's just, he's looking just to get to his spot on the next side of the formation. <laughs> We have one we used to use a long time ago, and we called it read, read motion. And it used to be, I don't know if you guys remember back when, you know, Hawaii was running the run and shoot, and they'd always have the receiver go to the opposite guard and back, and we just have him read in the secondary. If the secondary went with him, he knew his man. If he turned around and came back the other direction, they came out with him as man to man. Uh, but if he kept going across, and they bumped over, we knew it was zone. And we had a certain read for that receiver. And we, we did that with middle school kids. Just yeah, yeah. the guy that goes with you. Yeah, Remember but did any of you guys really see like a true man defense? I mean, I never did. We, we uh, my first year on varsity up here, we had a team that went straight uh, cover zero and cover one. Really? Oh, uh, and it was, we ate them alive. And then we <laughs> the I, I wish, I wish, I, I mean, the closest I saw to that is, again, if we would go into our trips formation and they would drop that safety down. That, that was, that was, that was the closest straight up man defense we saw. I mean, I would love to see, I would love to see a cover zero. I've never seen it. We saw a cover zero. We have a big seven on seven tournament out here at uh, New Mexico military Institute. Mm -hmm. And this team went straight zero the whole day. It didn't matter what we were in, from middle school all the way through. And we just yeah. ran all our picks in our poor birds and 
That's when we started tagging our four bird stuff with those yeah. guys. Tell them, hey, 97 X break, 92, whatever it was. And, Dude, it was it was a great day for seven on seven. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And then we saw them in the playoffs, and they did the same thing. Except now you got the pressure coming because they're bringing five and six every play. Um, sorry to get on. No, nah, you're fine. You're fine. I don't. I don't. I'm, I appreciate the comments. Good questions. All right, so this is our snake motion. It's kind of similar to shift, but now it's a little bit speedier. It's a little bit faster here. So typically, we run inside a two by two. This motion is a speed motion, similar to the jet, but the motion will not receive the ball or uh, or be a threat until he crosses the formation. So again, he's going to cross formation. He's not. We're not getting a handoff on this one. We're trying to get the cross formation, but then he either becomes a threat in the actual passing concept, like for example here, this is a shallow. So we're trying to get him into a shallow route a little bit quicker to try and avoid all this traffic here. Um, or we can actually just set up a little bit of a screen pass over here as well. Um, to avoid a procedure penalty, the motion man is to keep his eyes locked on the outside most receiver. So basically he's watching this receiver right here. And when this receiver moves or starts going into his route or his move, his movement, that's an indication for if this receiver is going forward that he can go forward. Otherwise he's going straight across and staying straight so that he doesn't get that false, that, that procedure penalty. <laughs> going forward before the ball snap. <clears throat> so we, again, we use this uh, screens and, um, you know, either shallow and I got a clip of us actually using it as a, as a screen pass. Um, hopefully the, hopefully the clip works. And so the, again, this one's very similar to shift, but he's not, he's not readjusting. He's going across formation and he's just going to keep on going with his eyes locked in this outside receiver. And so we'll show it to you real quick here. And the motion, man, I know it's going to be hard to see. He'll motion this way. And it'll be hard to see, but he'll get the ball right about here. I'll turn around for a quick screen. And hopefully it plays. It. The going to stop. Okay, so. But he's going across formation. And sure. he's not in the route. He, he executes have... that speed out screen looking thing every time. Correct? Yeah. Well, I mean, in, unless, unless we tell him. Unless we unless we tag another route to him, so we can tell him it's either you know we'll have a signal for a screen, or if it's a shallow, um, we, we we signal the shallow play. He's, if it's just shallow, he's just he's just going to start it into a shallow cross here. But there he stayed behind the line of scrimmage, and it was essentially uh, what we call our, our quick screen to the outside, which is our Rita, our Rita is our quick screen to the outside. So we signal that. So we just said you know ace ace snake uh, ace snake early Rita. And that tells him that he's he's getting he's getting a quick screen on the uh, on the uh, right side. Gotcha. So just, uh, all of a sudden it stops midway through the clip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you would play the rest of the clip. <laughs> there he goes. Yep. All right. What's that? To put it on the scoreboard. Yeah. And so this is our jump motion. This is we just basically just motion him into the backfield motion RH. And typically it's RH that we usually put in motion. Now we can put um, our Y in motion. He's the only other player that's off the line um, out of our two by two set. But, you know, typically it's RH. That's, that's, our, that's our playmaker. That's our guy. We're going to try and move around as much as we can. So in our jump motion, this motion is wide receiver moves into the backfield with the running back. Uh, it gives a lot of options because it gives us the threat of a run for the motion a pass or even using the motion as decoy. So you can see here, he just motions in and we can run, you know, for example, counter right here. Um, and I have two clips of this and just one where you see the actual counter. It's not a very good run it got blown up, but um, then the second one, same motion. And then you just run stick away from it. Hopefully again, it plays. And of course, that's not going to play. And then essentially the same exact motion. If it plays. This is, basically, this is how you can get into a two two back set, however you yep. want to do that. Mm -hmm. Instead of yep. calling it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And we can actually do this from we can start out in trips and do this because we can um now typically a lot of times where we have it set up where we have the back usually is on the same side as as the trips, but we can either give a tag to have him tag over to the other side if we want to motion him in, or they can just both just kind of shift over uh, yeah, at the same time. That'd be good to try to, you know, 
get outnumbered, go to the open side. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And but now basically what we're doing is we're just motioning him in his decoy. He's essentially just going to be a pass blocker. We're just trying to get the defense's eyes here because they know that we're trying to get the maybe thinking we're trying to get the ball here, and we're actually just going to run stick out to the side here. So. And again, that's just an example of us using uh, the jump motion as a decoy there. Can you run that again? What's that? Oh, you want me to go back to it? Which one? The one on the uh, the decoy one or the other one? The second. Okay. I don't know why it's doing this. It wasn't doing this earlier. <laughs> so you can see it. Uh, he came all the way from a middle part of the field to make that play. Did you see it again, Coach, or no? All right, so this is our orbit motion. Now, I haven't actually gotten into the full orbit motion. We did, I guess you would call it like a half orbit motion, if there is such a thing. Uh, but what I really wanted to eventually get into is that speed orbit motion where you see him going really, really fast behind the quarterback. I really want to get into that. I, I don't, I haven't got into that yet. I, that was – that was a plan to install that uh, this past season, but just again with COVID, it was it was tough. Uh, so this motion typically is a slot receiver, obviously motion either into the backfield or in a speed motion behind the QB to the running back or the, the side of the formation. Either way presents good options. Having the wide receiver stop in the backfield similar to jump motion allows for a two or two easy read plays to happen when the, the quarterback can read the unblocked defensive end, determine whether he's handoff or throw the swing to the motion player, which I actually have a clip of that. Uh, the other way is he can uh, be used is to have the motion speed go all the way through the formation. I can't type y'all. I'm sorry. This creates a one side. Uh, this creates uh, quick numbers advantage to one side quickly before the uh, defense has time to adjust. So, so what you're going to see is, I, again, this is the full orbit motion, but we would have our H almost he – would, he would come motion back here and he would stop almost like in a pistol position right on the quarterback. And the quarterback, we would run inside zone and we would read the defensive end. And that defensive end crashed, he'd, he would throw the ball out to the swing. Or if that defensive end just stayed or if he had numbers, if he, if he liked the handoff, he'd hand the ball off and fake the swing. So – Hopefully this shows up here. I have to actually fast forward because I couldn't find any clips of this, so I actually have to show if it shows up. Probably not, of course. No, the technology is screwing up. Oh, there it goes. Okay. This is actually one of my one of my YouTube videos. I have to pull this out of. I'm actually gonna go to where it was. So I can show it to you. Get this off the screen. All right, you know. I don't know if this is gonna work, y'all, for whatever reason. Nothing there. <laughs> I apologize, fellas. All right. This this is working for me. It looked, it looked like the video you were moving the cursor around in the video. Well, I was because I'm, because I'm actually showing you one of my YouTube videos on my channel where I'm talking about this this particular motion. All right, and I'm trying to get to the point where I should just show the cut up of. Anyways, I might just say, you know what? If you want to see it, go and watch this video right here on my YouTube channel. <laughs> because I'm not, I don't know why it's not not working for me here. And I mean, I, I've been messing with this thing all day and it was been working for me fine all day. And then all of a sudden I get here and but, but he, this stop, he, he stops like, it, he, he stops though, right? And then on the- Yeah, he, he stops right here. Mm -hmm. And yep, he flare. does. Yep, this is just flaring. It's crazy. Hey, like, do you guys mess with um, speed option? No, I have not messed with speed option at all. So I, I, I spent a lot of time with AJ Knutson, and I wasn't brave enough to put in any type of um, triple option. Mm -hmm. But what we what we kind of – he helped me put together is like a fake triple, which is basically what you're doing with that swing other than instead of throwing it in full speed. And then <laughs> we, we're either going to run inside zone and then fake speed or fake inside zone and run speed. So it's not – and it was pretty effective either way because it looks triple option, but, you, but it's only double. Right. And then I, I think I, it was easier for us than, than trying to read that in. I have um, 
I have not had the confidence enough to to teach that pitch. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I don't really know the ins and outs of it yet. So I've I've been kind of studying up on that because I do want to put it in, into my into the uh, the playbook, but I just haven't haven't had the confidence to teach the pitch yet. So yeah, it's pretty funny, and it's very similar. But you're running the same thing just with a pass. How how successful was mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it was pretty successful. I mean, we didn't use it much, but you know, we we kind of just threw in there every once in a while based based on what we saw as far as the um how they adjust i don't know why it's gonna stop me now here but here he's actually handing the ball off okay he stopped it and then going back and running player okay yeah okay cool yeah why don't you do that and actually we on our, our this was actually two seasons ago the, the this clip's from and what we actually did, and I'm actually going to go back to to show you just a little little kind of thing we added to this for the last last uh, last game of the year. And I'll actually move it over to here. We actually brought these. these we, this was like one of the last plays of the game we wanted just to try. We we took these receivers and made these receivers stacked. And this receiver was going to run. This this receiver is back. It was in the second part of the stack. Just we're going to run a straight. Uh, outside release vertical. The other receiver, the, the front receiver is going to run just a, a slant. We brought this player in motion, but instead of faking the zone, F flares out here, and it's just a toss to H, and he just lets it go and lets it rip for a, just a, basically a halfback pass because we knew that H could throw, so we had to take advantage of it. So it was a little trick play we just added in. Yep, we did that. We must have we must have thrown six touchdowns with, with that exact thing. He would come around, quarterback would get it, just toss it behind over his shoulder. Yeah. It, it was a little bit of practice timing, but since we were running it otherwise, man, yeah. devastating. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, we scored we scored a touchdown. It was the only time we ran the play all year and we scored a touchdown. So I was, I was happy about it. Cool. All right, and our, our last motion here is just a simple little push motion. This is this this is just a motion just to get the running back out in numbers for a screen pass. So that's all this that's all this was this says is quarterbacks just uh putting this uh running back into motion and he's essentially getting the getting the throw pass or the swing pass um in the backfield basically after his third step to the quarter or the running back should be looking and to again to avoid a to avoid a procedure penalty, he's got to go essentially flat flat for three yards. He, he wants to run straight line for three yards. He's at that point, the ball should be snapped and he should be looking. So essentially, we tell the running back on your third step, you should be turning your shoulders and looking for the ball. But after those after those those first three steps, you're running hard as fast as you can to get as much uh, outside leverage as you can, and then turning your shoulders and and. Been looking for the ball, so this is, and the quarterback's just getting in his cadence, and he's just giving the the, uh, the running back a quick signal to uh, get into his motion. I just have one little clip of this one. Any questions on this one at all? No, sir. I like it. Yep, good stuff. All good stuff. Motion. As always. We had the numbers. Just if you can see right here, he's already chasing after his blocker right here. He's already missed his block. There's a good block right there. So. Yeah, better block on the outside of this play would have went for more. Good, good goal line play. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, that's what I didn't think. I didn't think about using this play on the goal line. We didn't we didn't call this play that often. Yeah. I was saying I I got a couple I can show you clips of that little uh, pop shuffle pass off the jet. When yeah, absolutely. Uh, what, what, want me to show him? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Mike, Mike's got something he was going to go over too, but go for it, Coach. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. All right, hold on. I might need to give you the, the option to share. Let me know if that's – if you can't share. I'll... Oh, okay. You should be able to, you should be able to share now. Can you see it? Yep. I'm riding slow motion. Now, see, how often do you, do you practice that to get the timing right of that pop pass? We practice that. Uh, it's once every three days. 
So it's part of our three day rotation. Okay. So we have that, we have that, what we call rocket, which is that, what'd you call it? The, um, the orbit. Yeah. We do that one day we do jet another, and then we do push another. Okay. Gotcha. And then it, now do they down in Florida now, if that, if he drops that ball, is it incomplete? Yeah, it's incomplete. Okay. Now we, we talk about that with the, uh, the reps before the game and say, look, we're running jet sweep, but we are running it with a forward pass. And that's, and that's key. They'll, they'll call it dead right away. Right. Cause we had a year's pass where, where they'll, they'll pile up on it, you know, thinking it's a, uh, but if, if we tell them before they, they don't, and I have here's one more. The, go ahead. Here's, here's the thing while you're, while you're looking for that is in North Carolina, they're actually, I, if I'm not mistaken. I heard someone say that they're, they're taking another look at that saying, no, you know, we might not call that incomplete because it's behind the line of scrimmage. Well, what about a forward, um, bubble or a forward quick, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I disagree with them bringing it up like that, but you know, that, that was because possibly the discussion. That's the thing is like, if they're going to, if they're going to take away all this other, if they're not going to let you practice because they're worried about injuries, why put in a play that's going to, that's going to cause a huge pileup, you right. know, I, it, some of their thing their, their thinking doesn't make any sense, yeah. but see, this is a really good one. Now you're telling and, the you're telling the quarterback um, he, he, he snap it when he's at the at the tackle or at the at the tackle and tackle. those two guys yeah it's it takes a lot of uh because he doesn't turn his head and it, and it was really effective because you know he's not looking at him at any time so these guys had a really good um, timing with each other. That's good because I mean there's nobody there. Yeah. It was really, it was really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm move this. See, this is what the, when we when we would shift. I'm trying to move this so you can all see this properly. We would be left to the isolated corner here, so we would shift into. You know, we, 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 that's their safety, and we and this is, we saw this every year, and you can see it's just our receiver in the corner. Now you can see the size of our outside receivers; they're big kids. And, we saw that a lot because there was nobody there. And we, and a lot of times we would shift into this. So that, that's why, sh that's why shift would, was, became so huge for us. And again, I don't have any clips for it. At least mm -hmm. there are clips that are going up and down probably make Mike sick. That's probably why I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, that's the best clip I've ever seen from you. I, I, <laughs> I can see everything great, man. <laughs> I got a question a while back um, about wristbands and, I mean, you guys, I mean, I'm, I'm straight hand signals. I think Mike, you're straight hand signals too, right? Uh, I, I used to do the wristbands. It's just a lot of work. And I mean, it our is. kids, our stuff fine. Uh, our seventh graders, we don't mess with that anymore. Robbie, you guys use wristbands, don't you? Yes, sir. We, yeah. uh, we, I stole it from Tony, Tony Franklin that tells his kids, you know, every what every job responsibility is on the plate. Yeah, that's right. You showed us that last, last week. <laughs> was... yeah, and, then I found somebody else's on D'Amico's site that posted one that was 100 different slides. And I think I sent that to you on Friday. Yeah, Robbie, I was, I was showing, I was telling my guys, my coaches about the, the color for the formation. I think I'm, I'm super excited because it's funny how we all have our strengths and things like that. I, I Jason, I, and I, I can't figure out the, the, the hand signals. That the, I can't get it to work. <laughs> so... Let me see here. Um, I had that. Matter of fact, I pulled that up a while ago. The one that was on D'Amico's site. Um, it's called, called the, uh, the Perfect Wristband. For the, it's on uh, D'Amico from Washington, D.C. site. And they've got like 100 different things on it. We started scripting series, like, like little series and things like that. That'll work. But still, but still, we would look at it because I had it set up to be where we could look at where we're at so I could signal it in quicker. Yeah. What'd you got there, Robbie? Well, that was my sheet from two years ago. Here's my sheet from this year. Yeah, it's something simple like that. I just, yeah. I, I just, start, I just started making an extra wristband for my kids. Now, do you, do you script the field too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I got the sheet. I went to uh, the one back clinic in Shreveport a couple years ago and got to uh, talk to Coach Mummy and Ron Mack and some other guys and 
I went back and I was like, if I just scripted Black Coach Mummy, because I, as I shared with you guys, I've worked with two of his best friends. And they're like, why don't you make it simple for yourself? Yeah. It doesn't matter if you script it the field or not. You're going to call it on the field anyhow. Yeah. When we did the wristbands, we didn't wear the wristbands the whole practice. So we would have to stop and go find the wristbands and put them on. You know, so it goes back to once we get going with the practice. I, I just don't like to stop for anything. I, I mean, it's just like blow and go. So it's probably just the, the way we did it. We yeah. we, we, yeah. You know, I was always anal about the, about collecting the wristbands. Like Robbie said, he only gave out eleven. We only had X number of mounts, so I was always counting counting them every day. But then we would have to hand them out when we got ready to go team stuff, and then we'd have to take them back up. And then I have to check them every week to make sure, you, you know, they were edible and clean and all that stuff. And, you, you know, it just got where I was spending more time doing that. And we were spending 10 or 15 minutes of practice every day, getting them on, getting them off, making sure nobody left them, making sure, oh, I forgot a coach here, get it to the coach, get it to the coach, just the coach that always got it. It just got to be, it was, it was just a thing in, of, in and of itself. And I finally just decided, okay, in the summer, we're just going to tell our guys we're not going to do any more wristbands. We're just going to, you know, do it. And I knew we could fall back on it if we needed it. And that was six, seven years ago. And even with our seventh graders that, you know, the first, I mean, you know, we haven't even worked with them yet. I mean, you know, we just started doing it that way. And it, and it seems to work for us. Right. Um, as far as the place sheets, I'm sort of like Jason now. I, I have my place sheet. You know, I have it on my Google Doc, and I have it scripted the first, I think, 12 plays, and then I have it, you know, down the distance and areas of the field like all you guys. And I spend all week working on it and really finish it up the night before and kind of as I'm, you know, watching my huddle, what, you know, getting ready for the game. I'm kind of studying that, but I'm like, Jason, I might take it out for the first game, you know, the season. But then after that, I sort of feel like I've memorized it and I'm kind of like jolly, jolly with the wristband. I, I can't stop and I get mesmerized by, by looking at my sheet during the game. And, and again, it defeats the purpose of us going fast. Our kids are used to go, doing that. It gives them confidence. So if, if I stop it because I'm reading the sheet, it just seems to just discombobulate us. So I just mm -hmm. I still make it. I use it as a reference. I try to memorize it and I'm, I'm thinking of it. But I don't have, I'm like Jason, I don't have anything with me it, it, on the field. It seems to hurt us rather than help us. And it's probably just my weakness as a coach. Uh, I get, I give our guy up in the booth the full sheet and I don't have it anymore. My best thing now that I did, that I did was to have, I can't remember which one you guys said it, but this, I did the same thing. I, I gave myself my own wristband. And then, cause I, I had memorized and knew what I was going to do. And I, it was just a matter of getting that in and singling it in. At some point, I'm gonna figure out how to signal it and practice that. That's that's just that that's my that's my yeah. shortcoming. I, I I don't do it well, and and the kids don't learn it for some reason. So I gotta focus on that coming forward. So, Charlie, how long are your play calls? I mean, play uh, formation, motion, play, snap count. Yeah, uh, so it would be like. Um, so some of them, when we're installing it, it's like wing right, 13 dive is what we call it, just to keep things simple for them, mm -hmm. even though it's we're running inside zone. But then it gets to the point, we, they, we do have them, and they like it. We call uh, inside zone left Marino, and we call inside zone right Brady, and that works. They can get that, but if I, I, if I signal something, they can't. So if I'm screaming Brady, Brady, they'll run it. But if I'm signaling stuff, I I, I don't know if it's there's too many there's there's too many, many people. Parts. Yeah, I I if like I'm thinking like maybe we just like have the quarterback look at it and then he calls it to the line maybe. I have, I have a friend in Oklahoma and he's gone through and we've sat down together on one of these Zoom calls and we've just taken his whole playbook and my whole playbook and shrunk it from whatever it was down to like nothing. Um, just everything's a concept. So he has like baseball concepts with baseball teams, NBA concepts with basketball teams, and football concepts with college and pro. So anytime he calls like Dodgers, 
and it's the, and the color he tells the color tells them left and right. So if they're using black for left and red for right, it's red Dodgers or red Toronto or red Rangers or whatever whatever the play call is. They know red goes to the right, and they're running that play. And if they're going to run black Rangers, it's the exact same play. Now it tells them to go to the left, and that's the only thing they they say. So it's color and concept, or color and then uh, the word. It just makes it small. It makes the play call a lot smaller, and he goes really, really fast. Yeah, our our passing concepts are one word. So would could you turn your running game into one? One word is what I'm saying. Right. That, I mean, we kind of did. Like uh, when when you asked that, I was like, wow. You know, we we didn't install it that way, but we were kind of doing that anyway because we would we would we would signal it in. You know, with with wristbands, mm -hmm. wing right, thirteen die, blah blah blah. But if we were going to go tempo or something like that, I would just scream out, Brady, Brady, and they would they would run it. So they knew it. I think it's just a matter of like you said, like condensing all that mishmash down to one word. Right. And, and what he does, and, you know, we're talking about motion tonight, his motion was part of it. You know, if it was a, like we were running fly, what what flies to the NFL? Falcons fly, Ravens fly, Eagles fly. And you just put all that as one word, and that's the whole play. You know, if you're running Eagles, which would fly right, and Ravens would fly, I'm sorry, Falcons would fly left, Ravens would fly right, there's your whole play call, is Ravens and Eagles. Yeah, it's good. And they used to install the day one that way. The kid, that's how the kids learn it. Just like wing right thirteen dive. They, I don't think they ever learned. Yeah, wing right thirteen dive. Every time we teach a pass route, I mean, once we show them the pass route, then we give them signal in that from then from then on. That's how we call it. Right. You know, in our practice, we we signal everything in. I don't holler everything out. I we signal it when the coaches signal it. Yeah, same here. So how, how, are you, how are you guys signaling? Like, like, give me an example. Cause I've seen the stuff and it's like, man, it's like, it's like sign language. White. Mm -hmm. My teeth are white. There's your formation. Yeah, I just hold up one finger. That would be two by two. You know, this would be like, for example, we'll just go, I'll, I'll even put it in motion. So we go ace, shift, early, and we'll go stick right. Is that an operations period thing of going over those uh, signals? Yeah, I mean, I, I never used the operations period. Now, I mean, you know, Kerry brought that up. I'm going to, you know, implement that in. But, I mean, it, for me, it was just, you know, I would I would show the formations. And then if I was covering four birds, we'd say, okay, here, here's here's four birds out of this formation. And we'd, we'd, I would drill it over and over and over again, you know. And then eventually when I was installing it, it would be, I'd be, I'd be you know, visually saying it while showing it but then at the end of practice i would just be it would be a silent signal and they'd have to tell me what it is when our routes on air period whenever yeah. that is you, you know when we're working on you know two or three routes that day you know everything everything is signaled in you know like i said we're yeah. trying to get as fast as we can like james said trying to mess them up we're trying to do we, we don't do the same formation you know we do a trip strike one time we'll go back to doubles or trips left the next time you know so we have to go all over the field but everything is signaled in. We just don't holler out what the play is. I mean, we always signal signal everything in. So they have what, to be watching us the whole time. If they don't get it, then yeah. Depending on where, like in practice, depending on what we're working on that day. Like if we're if we're working on corner, they're gonna see and hear you know the the signal as well as me saying it like I'm seventy sorry. times as that that one day. You know, so yeah. they're gonna it's, it's gonna be like just drilled into their head. So yeah, us too. Yeah, I mean that's that's the way we do it. Yeah. And so now with the wristbands, I'm thinking about using wristbands a little bit this year. This year for kind of like what Lash was talking about with, uh, like if he had like special plays, you know, because I have a, I have a couple of packages like package formations like the diamond. You know, if you watch that diamond video, that's a package for me. That is not base offense for me. Yeah. So that's something that that's something we put in. It's like five plays. That I mean, I have signals for him but it's just adding signals and, you know, the kids got it this past season, but it would be that much easier and faster if they had like five plays where they could, I could just say blue five and they would look down. Oh, okay. There we go. And they would go, you know, that, and, and sort of certain, I'm, I'm considering using wristbands for like certain plays that I don't have to just overload them with signals on. I can just keep the base offense signals the same and see they had no problem with that. Now, obviously, 
the early part of the season, it's 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 a headache. It's frustrating. So they're still confused as all get out. But then as you know, eventually, I I like to call it like the light bulb turn. And you can see it in practice. The light bulb is all of a sudden just trying to get it. And they understand it, and then then from there, it gets better and better and better. Oh, look at this! Oh, we got it on there. Look at that. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> well. Continue. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I was I was just playing around just to see. I, 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 anyway, it was me. All right, you want me to go? Oh, I, I gotta yeah. see a running man signal. Yeah, we just we we just we just call it running man. He's gonna do the dance, right? Yeah. <laughs> call it running man. That's where. That, yeah, let, let me move this out of the way here. All right. Well, I can't move this up. Anyway. All right. So, so ours is a little. You, I'm gonna show you the diagram screen here in a second, and y'all gonna go nuts. Jason actually helped me with this. Similar to Jason and all, all that, all his presentation, and he and I talked a couple times last week. But you know us, we we live and die. You know, if you've seen any of the stuff that I do, you know, with the quick game stuff, which is basically four or five plays for us. And I wanted to be able to do motion with that. Of course, the routes change a little bit. Some of our quick game, we have our R in the route, and sometimes he does a check down. So I needed to come up with a system of rules so that we could get into that. And like Jason said, if I wanted to, if I wanted to start in you know three by one, whether it was early or just regular trips, I wanted to be a, a way to get into that and do it both ways. And so I've been playing around with this for a while. And, you know, we did a show last year. So anyway, so anyway, the motion should be run on any quick game. It goes down. I can't, I can't scroll that up. Uh, two step, our quick game is usually one step drop. In motion, it goes to two step drop. Our running man, which is the guy in motion, is uh, it always becomes the number two receiver in our route, which makes no sense now, but just keep in mind because when I show you the diagrams, hopefully it'll make sense. The other thing I wanted to do, like what Jason talked about, is it opens up your backside. And I wanted to have some set rules so everybody knew what they were doing backside, because I thought if we could do this successfully, everybody's going to, like Jason, his guys are going to, you know, safety moves over. For us, they're probably going to, we see some now, we, saw, we see some three, four, so we're gonna, they're going to roll, rotate up into a one high safety, and we want to take advantage of that backside to see if they know what they're doing. So hopefully the screen, can y'all see that? Yep. All right, this is our quick game. So this is just basically, you know, the motion, the running man, it shows you the running man. The running man is the two receiver, or I just playing in trips, running man's going to go back into from three by one. Two, two by two, it, for us, it's always going to be that guy. So it's a little different than Jason. Jason's guy and some of his motion was that guy. For us, to make our rules work, it's always going to be our number two receiver. So our quick game is basically the all stop. We call it the all stop. We call it the curl flat, which is one of the Salas's things. The slant hitch, which is our main route, and our all go. And we do have a tag for that, which is down there. So let's just go. So let's just go here. Our first route that we teach. Might take a second. Everybody still with me? Yep, we got it. We call we call this the all stop. We have a signal for it. It's a one word signal. And everybody's going four four feet going four feet. The outside receivers are going five. So. We're going to go in motion. So the receivers, the rule is the, the two receivers always going to be the two receiver. Our inside, our, our inside most receiver on the play side. So we're going to go all stop to the right. And we again we have a signal for that. For our, our rules and all these rules, we're going to run the under Sam over Mike route. I guess one high safety is basically going to do that right there. Two high safety, he's going to sit down in the screen grass. If you do that, makes sense. Our backside is always going to do a 10 yard dig. So our set, so our backside, our, we're teaching our quarterback to look for the nearest hash on the field. So it becomes a stick route. 
comes to a, comes to the stick route. So the number two receiver is going to go do his four yard all stop route. He's going to go four yards and stop. He's going to go to green grass. So what became comes into a stick outside receiver is going to do a five yard stop. This is the first route we teach, and we run the stop and go. We run the stop and go off of that, where they turn around and stop and do stuff. So it's similar to the last thing. He teaches us all in one play. We divide it into two plays, and it's called. And, and the R is always going to the backside. What's the progression on that? After that, after the motion, is he, is he looking, is he looking yeah. R to X to, to Y, or is he? It's going to be, <coughs> then he's going to read the number two. Number two, we feel like one of these is going to go, is going to be open. He is told on the on all quick games, good point. We don't do a lot of, we don't do a lot of, for our quick game, 1,001, 1,002, if nothing's there, we look backside because we're usually taking the one-step drop. Yeah. The quarterback is told if it's if it's not an if then if he can't do the if then if I call it to the right and he's looking to the right he's told to throw it in the ground. Yeah. That's just that's just the way we do it. We do not want to throw an interception. We're not going to hold on to it. We're not going to scan the field on the quick game route. That's just the way we're going to do it. Yeah, so if we're, going to, if we're, we're going to we're, if we're going to go backside, I'm going to show you the play play we scored on with this. I throw in the backside stop to that. Um, we, we, he's going to look to the left, and the progression is going to look there first, because that would be where the number two is always going on the quick game. He always look at the two defender. Two defenders going to be that there, or the two defenders going to be there. He's going to only going to read the two defender, and he's going to make an if then decision. Good question. The motion doesn't change that. If Mike, I answer. Mike, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. On your X on here. I, I call this a dig route. I don't know what you guys call it. But right, the, the, this, the, on motion, yeah, of the that's what we, call it, we call it a dig. Yes, the, the single, re, your X receiver, <laughs> 10 and dig. Yes, 10 is, and is he, Yeah, is he reading grass? I mean, is he reading for, if he, there's nothing in the middle of the field as he comes across, is he sitting or is he running as he goes across the field? We have told, we have told to make it simple here. We have told him to keep running. We've okay. told him if the ball is not thrown to you, to keep running. Well, yeah, and that would, well, clear, we, that would clear out. We feel like, again, this is going to be an if-then. We feel like the ball is going to get out of his hands one way or the other quick. He's going to read that. He's going to make one read and throw it or throw it in the ground or run. He's not going to scan the field. So we, we just tell him, if the ball is not thrown, you keep running on this route. Now, we might change it, uh, you know, with game planning, but we've never but we've never done it. Okay. I just did a little waggly line there, and I was trying to figure out if he was reading grass or what. So, thank no, you. Not on, not on, not on the quick game. Right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna show you. Not take time. I'm gonna show you our, our main two plays of quick game. This is our curl flag. You watch a lot of Salas' stuff. He says he won the state championship. He runs more of the last year thing of fade out. Although he will tag his 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 guys. This is how we do it. This is how this is how it was originally conceived by Leach and Mummy originally. So the stuff we run is old is old school quick game stuff. We call this the curl flat. We have a one word signal for that. So you see what we're doing on both of those routes. We're coming, we're coming behind somebody, basically. You know, one's going out, one's coming in behind. Now with and the motions he is in this, you know, I mean cut you off my and that that guy motions. He kind of doing what I was talking about. Is he shifting and reset, or is he keep? Is he? He's moving? not reset. None of this motion. He's not. We haven't got into the the reset yet because okay. we want to try to catch the defense while they're shifting. So we're either going to call it to the right, or we're going to pre snap call it to the left. Mm -hmm. Is he moving pretty fast, like a jet motion, or is it? Uh, Yes, he's running, he, again, he's running, man. He's running full speed. Okay. He becomes the number two. The number two receiver run on the curl flat runs the speed out. So if this was the number two receiver, so, so, so we weren't to have any motion, we're running this on both sides, and the two receivers running the speed out. On the motion rules, say our, our running man becomes the number two receiver, so he knows I am running the speed out. And I know, again, the motion rules, instead of running the speed out, this guy's running the USAM under Sam over Mike route and against the one high safety. 
he's going to continue on into the power. And he knows that he's going to run the dig automatically. He knows he's going to, he's going to check. He's going to check. Because I'm like, I'm like Jason, a lot of times people try to, if we go into any type of motion or three by one, they like to bring this guy up on the line of scrimmage. So we're going to check him. If he doesn't come, we're going to run this. We call that the shoot route, but it's basically the same thing from the back. He's running a, 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 a speed out, but we call it the shoot from the back. And then we're coming, we're coming to curl seven yards, and he comes, he plants his foot 45. And again, he doesn't come to green grass. He is told, you keep running all the way to the quarterback until the ball is thrown to somebody. Okay, again, we're reading one guy. We're reading this number two defender here. We're making a quick throw if we're going to that side. Questions, comments? So he's, again, he's looking speed out to curl flat to, to cross? or right, so, he, so basically he's looking – All quick game, our quarterbacks are looking at that area right there. Okay. They're looking, they're, they're taught from day one to look at the two defenders. All quick game routes are if then throws, you know, we're getting it out before three seconds. Yeah. Because like, like you were talking about like the backside, you know. Um, well, I, I, so so pre-snap, I'm not I'm not going to thousand one, thousand two, and then look backside. Right. Not middle school. I am. I'm going to see something that they're really like you. Like you're talking about. You saw the safety is vacating, or the safety is moving over to the other hash. Mm -hmm. we're going, then we're just going to call it. We're we're going to we're going to call the route. We're going to tell the quarterback, and this is what we're going to say. So we're going to call it curl flat. We're going to call the route, and I'm going to tell the quarterback, look, backside, yeah. and so he knows pre-snap that he is looking. So now. Instead of looking there, now he's looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like you, Mike. I mean, I don't, I don't I, have my he's quarterback. Looking, he's looking at pre-snap over there. We're not. We're going to try to make it as easy on the quarterback. We're not trying to do sexy stuff. We're not trying to do with thousand one, with thousand two, and then look across the field. Not with seven and eight great quarterbacks. We are doing simple if then throws, and we're getting better at that. Then you can defend it. That that's just how we think, and how we're going to defend. Uh, how we're going I'm, to. Keep I'm it. just like you. I mean, I don't. My quarterback is not going to. He's not going to look concept side, then look back side now, while I he's. Somebody I was doing a video on the, my quick game, and somebody says, "Well, what happens if they're not open?" Which is a good question. And anytime <laughs> we do routes on there, anytime in practice, I may say, I may go up to the quarterback and I go, "Hey, throw it, throw it at the receiver's feet." I want an incomplete pass. So we teach the quarterbacks, and I'll tell them, and we'll practice this. I'll, I'll have to, one of my Friday things, I have not videoed it. I'm over, I'll have, I'll video it. I always send Jason on Friday, my Friday quarterback stuff. <laughs> and on Friday, we tell the quarterbacks every now and then, I'll tell them to throw it at his feet. And throwing it at the feet means to throw it a yard in front of the feet, and it's supposed to bounce into the quarterback, into the receiver's hands. That's the way we teach it. So we'll take an incompletion. We are not going to take an interception. We're not going to take a sack. We tell the quarterback, get it out of your hands. And if the if then is not open, throw it in, throw it in the ground. We're and the same as you. We're, 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 we're pre-snapping backside. So and I think I adopted whatever. I think it was Fasil or last year said, if we see five, take five. So if we, if we see those five yards of backside, pre-snap, take, take it. it. Yeah, and I, don't, I don't care. Don't but care. It's always, always pre-snap. You're not. Scanning. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he's not. He's not scanning the field. No, he's he's looking concept, and if it ain't there, he's. I, I tell him either, like you say, throw it in dirt or get get some yardage. You know, tuck it and run. This is our number one play, and this is why we do not do the stick. And this is why our rules. This is why we had to come up with a set of rules. No stick. No, no <laughs> stick. This is this is our stick. <laughs> We started off running the stick out of two by two, but what happens for us? Y'all y'all were talking earlier about going zero coverage and man. What happens in our league is because I guess, like Jay said, we always put our best, quickest athletes at these two guys and do a lot of like I said, move them around, do a lot of stuff. Those guys are almost always covered man to man over the, over over the years. 
So when we started doing the stick, it wasn't doing anything because this guy would, you know, he'd go four yards and turn around or whatever, and our, our guy would be right there. Now, we would, we would complete the flare, which we are kind of famous for, you, you know, the flare, and we would get yards out of that, but it wasn't really doing anything for us. So I talked to the guy that taught me this years ago, and he says, oh, I forgot to tell you on the stick, you're supposed to go vertical anyway if, if your stick guy senses that your defender turns and runs with you, you're supposed to go vertical. So, so we started teaching that and we never ran the stick anymore because when we call the stick, it still, it still looked like the slant hitch play because every time he started to motor down and look for green grass, he find out that the, his defender was turned and was, it was covering man to man and he was taught to go vertical. So we just took the stick out of our playbook in by two by two. And this is our number one route. And again, like the curl flat, you see what we're doing. We're making an if then throw and we're coming behind. And we're coming behind, I'm reading the two defender and we're coming behind you. If you're gonna go man to man right there, we're coming behind right there. Similar to, similar to the curl flat, and we've made a living off this play for the last 10 years, this simple play. If we're going two by two, we're doing the same thing on both sides. We're not having a play side, a concept side and a back side. We're doing slants. They're doing the same thing. They're doing the slant hitch on both sides. So we're keeping the defense honest out of the two by two. They can't guess, oh, on the wide side of the field, he's going to go because you know they're not going to throw the back side because they're just going to throw it the wide side of the field like sometimes we get caught in that. We're not good enough to coach it like that, so we just do our concepts on both sides. So now that Y now the two by two out of the curl right. flat, our R is in the pass route. That's where we come up with the stick philosophy. So we're really putting that guy in a bind because the R in the two by two does do the flare. So we're really putting this guy in a lot of you know in, in, in a lot of quandary here, a lot of conflict. So we couldn't have the running man and we couldn't have the R doing the, both the flares at the same time. So that's where we had to come up with the rule. Anytime in our quick game that we call the slant, which this is, or the all go, which we automatically run a flare off the all go as a check down, we had to come up with the rules. So therefore, the running man always becomes the speed out slash flare slash shoot, whatever you want to call it. Anytime we call the slant or all go. So since this, this play call is the slant hits, this is a combo route and I call it, we have a signal for that again, you know, but we're, we're so, so we're still getting this, this guy in conflict. If he, if he wants to turn and run with this defender, he sees this guy going to do the shoot. So he's, we're putting this guy in an awful lot of conflict and we hit the slant bunches of times and I have bunches of videos on that I could show you another time this is why we don't run the stick anymore out of two by two because this this is our basic go-to play it's been really good for us it's easy to teach this is the second thing that we teach but I had to come up with this different set of rules to account for the R but to also get this guy to be running the speed out to put this guy in the country. still if then still one person read but now the quarterback's got an extra guy to throw to if he wants to do that. And the, the progression is slant, flare, hitch. We call that a hitch. Mike, that, that Y, is he's running a slant or is that like a seam route? He's running a slant. Good question. The way we teach going vertical, any, anything, anytime we teach you going vertical, we tell you to look at the landmarks like – like we would teach you to do, go vertical on an all go. We're going to say, go to your landmark and go vertical. For us, we teach the slant the same way. So we teach the slant a little differently. We're going to teach you to get inside your defender and go vertical, but we really want you to go keep the landmarks in mind. So that's the way, that's the way we're going to teach it. Now, if your guy's going to line up right in right on top of you, and we get a lot of that, to go man to, to, co to cover man to man and to take away our screens. So we would tell you to go inside. If you could get inside of your guy, just make sure you go vertical. If your guy's going to run with you, 
take him with you and go to your layers in that landmark and go vertical. That's how we're going to teach it. Good question. Good question. So our slants are a little different. We're going to, we're going to use the landmarks. The question looks like, so go ahead and ask me, Mike, what happens if you're not on the land? What happens if you're not in the middle of the field? Same answer. We're still going to teach you to try to get to your landmark, the closest as you can to the landmark until you can get inside your defender. And then when you're inside your defender, you may go vertical. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. No, I like it, Mike. I mean, I, I teach verticals the same way. I mean, we started on in the middle and then moving to the hashes and they have to they have to find their landmark for verticals. It's the same way. And yeah. teach them not to take a beeline to it, but you've got, we tell them drift over to it. If you understand Mike, what I'm saying. I understand exactly. That's the understand exactly. This is something for me to think about because I've, I've mentioned in our meetings before that I stick doesn't work that good for me. It's not bad, but it's not all. I'm not super impressed by it. And this gives me something more to think about because I, you know, I don't know it why, but that, for us in two by two, it works for us in three by one, but it doesn't work for us in two by two, basically because most everybody walks up on us right there and they're going to cover our inside guys man to man pretty much. Coach Jolly, we run the same kind of the same concept with the motion, and I've stole it from uh, Mike, may you remember. Um, John Jenkins used to be at the University of Houston. They used to run the slide concept with the USFL. We were talking about that earlier. It's the same concept except number three when it comes in motion. He runs a bubble. So it right. gives, kind of reverse fish hook is what June Jones called it, or uh, John Jenkins called it. And it's the same concept. It just yeah. has that guy coming in motion and gets him behind the line of scrimmage and it kind of shields him off from getting picked up by the linebacker. When we first started the most, we that's how we actually taught it, and we told them to go to the numbers and stop. Yes, that's how, and I, I think that's how that got taught. It is. He was at the one back clinic in Shreveport a couple of years ago, and that's where I learned. More from. things, real quick. Okay, so so the only other thing I so so we do we do the all stop curl flat curl flat and go off that slant hitch. Now we also have a derivative play off that where we do all hitch, hitches off this. Uh, where, every, where the inside receivers go four and across, which is how you get into the shallow or the mesh. Okay, so, but anyway, so now we get into the all goes, the verse, the six, whatever you call it. We call it an all go. We call it steamers, all goes. Some call it six, some call it whatever, whatever it is that you call it. We run it, we run it two different ways. Okay, again, using the landmarks. The first way, first way we did to keep in with the motion rules He's going to do the same thing. Slants goes. He's going to run the shoot route. He's going to go. He's going to continue on. Again, we're just running the we're just running the verts here, going to the landmarks, mandatory outside release, going to the landmarks. And yes, if we're not in the middle of the field, he's going to he's going to find the landmarks. I mean, that's just how we're that's how we're going to teach before they go vertical. Same concept, same thing, same thing. You notice we don't have a USOM route here. Okay. All right, so we, we showed you last week when we went over the screens, or a couple of weeks ago we went over the screens, you know, I showed some motion in the screens, and that's how we first got into this, because we started motioning into some of our screens and really started having a lot of success over that. You know, we, I showed you some of that a couple of weeks ago. Some of you guys said you might steal that. So we started, so we started modifying, and we noticed that nobody would ever react to, the, to that to the screens when we started going in motion and we just kept throwing the now screen out of that. And we, and, we, and they would never adjust and they would never walk up. And, and we finally, I figured out why, because they were afraid we were going to do this, right? They were afraid we were going to do this. And I'm fixing to show you our touchdown, us touchdown off of it. So this is how, so if you're in three by one, All right, so let's go three by one, get the squiggly lines. If we're in three by one, you're going to teach this guy to go, you're going to teach the inside receiver to go to the, the nearest hash, right? Yeah. So if you're in three by one, the nearest guy is going to this hash. This guy's going to this hash. Outside receiver's going to outside receiver. So nothing really changes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Questions? So we start playing around with this one day in practice, and we go, Damn, that's, that looks pretty hard to cover. 
And I think I showed you this last week when we went over it, the one clip, or just one clip. This is how this is how we find, really got fired up on really doing the motion after uh, we went over. I had to especially zoom with Jason a couple of guys last year when I was just, last summer when I was just thinking about implementing this. Played around with it all summer. We stopped and started and all that, and really never got into it. Uh, but this is hopefully you can see it. I ran, I showed this clip last year. I mean last week. So <laughs> we're in two by two. You're going to see the last tag. He comes across. Our R's, our R's in the wrong in the wrong spot. But as you can see, we're all covered up. I think I moved him over here because I wasn't really sure about this guy right here. See, they tried to cover us up. And so our last tag, this guy's going to run. He's going to run the USAM or he's going to go to the other hash and go vertical. He's going to go vertical. Inside guy's going to go vertical and he's going to, he's going to go in motion and turn up. So here, I'm going to watch it. Put him in motion. He points at him. We step up under right there and we throw it. The guy, that's the, this is the guy that came across the field right there. Let's see, I saw that guy that chasing that motion man all the way across the field too. And the guy, the guy like you, the guy, the motion man goes across the field, but they covered us up. So I, instead of having the R over there, I, I kept the R here in case I wasn't really sure. But this is the guy that runs, that catches the pass. And you can see him off the So watch him off the line of scrimmage. This is a great route. He's really smart. He's going to be a good high school player. See, look at him. He's looking. There he goes. He goes downfield. That's their safety. Watch, hey, watch, watch this guy right here. Watch, 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 watch what he does. <laughs> hey, lost. Boom. And that's right at the end of the game. That helped us win the game. So you yeah, got two options there, BSB is the outside receiver, that, that number outside one receiver. receiver and the, outside, it was wide outside open. Receiver, outside receiver was clean too. So anyway, I'm still on that motion journey, but but my goal was a little bit a little little bit different in in Jason is that I wanted to make it where everybody knows that this is kind of where we live. This is what we do mainly. This is this is this is what we have to do better that you can defend it, uh, and I wanted to really make it where we could do this just as easy as line up in three by one or two by two, um, with just a few simple rules and do it quick and really put a, you know defenses in a bind. And we act, what's funny is we had a little trouble with our eighth grade doing this. Our seventh grade, I said last summer, you know, we stopped and started like all you guys. We talked about that beforehand, that we weren't even going to do this with the seventh grade last year. We spend all the time, all our uh, you know, seventh grade year teaching basically these five routes. And we also do the Y corner. You know, we call it the hide route. That doesn't really work good in that. I'm still working on that. But that's the only route we don't run out of motion, the quick game. So we have, this is our total quick game package other than the Y corner. Um, but one day, a couple of weeks before the end of uh, late September, our assistant coach uh, that does the wide receivers for me, some grade, they were having a really good practice. And he said, hey, y'all want to learn something new today? And by 20 minutes, those guys had gotten it. And we actually did some of that the last two games of the seventh grade. They got it much easier than the eighth graders for some reason. I don't know why that is. So I'm really excited this year in a couple of weeks you know, when we start our spring that's what we're really going to work on is is doing this. And again, our rules hold up if we're in three by one and going to go back into two by two. And I think that's where we can really catch some teams and we can get good at going into this three by one. You know, you saw us, you know, we could we were, we completed that guy going on the backside route. Then the teams aren't going to are going to be you not know, over shifting as much. Then if we go back into the two, I think it's going to really, you know, cause some defensive problems. And so I'm going to really make an effort this spring and summer to get good at this out of our quick game. And that was what I really wanted for us to use motion for screens, screens and goes in quick game, because that's 90 percent of what we do passing wise. I felt like if we could really scare you into thinking not only do we have to defend you, but we have to defend you doing anything you throw 
out of motion and you can do it pretty good. I just really think it's a, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade level. That's going to be really difficult for a defense. So anyway. You're absolutely right. Mike, I have one question or two questions. Okay. On your curl flat over here in the far left corner. Yeah, this, yes, sir. That one. This is our number two pass route. Yeah, on your number two pass. Yeah. Um, there it comes. We throw this a bunch, a bunch. Okay, so I have two comments on this. First off, um, your X is running, you know, we talked about a second ago, the dig. How far is this, how far is this route for you guys? Ten yards, okay. plant your foot, go right across. Okay, okay. And then my second point or question or whatever the comment is you mentioned, you know, leech and mummy when they started. Um, I know through history I'm working with guys that worked with Mummy at Copper's Cove when they started this, when they started with the two-back stuff, because that's all they did. This was before early, late, and all this other new stuff we've got. If if your A would be in the backfield and would be your right halfback. He's doing the speed out. He has the speed out still off of that. He's, and doing, he's doing exactly what you're doing. So, so yes, if we're in the two-back we're in the two back set, He's doing the speed out, and he's doing, and, and this guy's doing this route, and we do that a bunch. We do that a bunch. Okay, so your A would be the the right half back, right? Okay, so, so the, a, the A the A would be no, well, the A would just go right here. The R would be there because the R R. So, but they just assume that was it that route is what he's going to go that right there. I mean, he's yeah. messing up, but he would he would do he would do the speed out, and he would do this route because that that would be two by two. We would yes. just that gun. That would be for us. That would be gun. Gun curl flat. We call the we call the route. He's going to do the speed out, and he's going to do that route right there. It, it, you know, for us, I'd be a two by yeah, two con. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Yep, yeah, that that that's how I learned curl flat. Yep. From the first offensive line coach with the program or with the system. So, and that's they they got that straight from BYU. So, just yep. get those get the backs crisscross and where the the linebackers actually their yep. eyes crisscross. So. Okay. Yeah, the, guy that, the guy that taught it to me uh, went for like 10 years uh, uh, to, to, to leeches for spring practice. So, yes, it, you know, I, I was very fortunate to learn. So, so some of that, my, my quick game stuff is still old school stuff. Uh, that's just how I learned it. We've never had reason to change it. And, again, we just feel like we can teach it pretty good. And if you can defend it better and we can teach it, then we deserve to lose. That's just kind of how we feel. Good stuff, Mike. All right. Well, I appreciate you letting me do it. And I'm still on this motion journey. <laughs> I'm really committed to that. I think motion at our level, if we can do it good, however it looks for you, it, you know, for, for the way Jason's using it, it's a little different way I use it. Both, I think, from his clips, obviously, is really effective. Yeah. If, you know, if it just if it works for you, there's a lot of ways to do it, a lot of different types of motion, just like in all this stuff. Pick out a couple of things that work for you. Come up with a set of rules that you can get into it quick. You don't have to make extra play calls, extra routes. Like like Jolly was saying, I don't want to have to do extra stuff. I don't want to make an extra play or call a specific play. I want to be able to incorporate it just as fast as I'm going. Like, like Coach Robbie said, I want to be able to call my formation, call my play, make my line call. I'm ready to go. I mean, I mean it's as easy as that. I can make the signal and – three seconds, four seconds, mm -hmm. and they can be snapping the ball in another four seconds. We can run a play in under 10 seconds. That's that's how we roll. That's how we win, basically. If we can't do that, we're not going to win, um, not at the level of athlete, you know, that we play. Yeah, my biggest thing with motion is, you know, I'm looking to take advantage of the eye discipline of the defense, you know, because I know, you know, from experience that at that level, the eye discipline is not that great. Agreed. So. And um, I'm looking to take advantage of any way I can there, Agreed. you know. And you so I, I – That's where they stayed in the box and they just moved their safety over. If you can throw the ball in, you oh, Jesus, I wish somebody would do that to us. That's yeah. like taking candy from a baby. And, and, and you all saw that. It's <laughs> great, great clips. You know, there's the easy throws. You know, some people would say, man, that's a hard throw for us. But if you rep that throw, that's that's not – that's a piece of cake. Yeah, and Jolly, that, that's a tag, too, so you might see that next week, or the week we do tag. <laughs> that, was, that was a simple little tag that we just did, and I can show you how we do that. We, we don't, we, with regards to tags, we don't, we don't, we signal all the tags in, but they're not, they're, there's, 
few. They're very few. So it's, it's we try to keep it as simple. Uh, but our, our, our tags right there, you, know, you saw it on our stuff. Is the the, the curl flat on on this curl flat? You got the curl flat and go, and you've got the uh, on the slant. You got the you got the wheel route. I mean, we don't do a lot of tags either. Again, that like like they said, it takes time to do it. You have to stop what you're doing. I, I called I maybe yeah we, we don't have maybe one. maybe four to five tags this the entire season maybe maybe for us. yeah so I mean it's not it's not something that's used a lot but you know if you see something now you guys were talking about like um and just why I brought this up I didn't get a chance to comment on this earlier um Rob I think you had your little your little play card and everything like that I was I was notorious this season and I've always been notorious for this for carrying like a stack of note cards. Right. And I'm sitting there, you know, I'm writing down things that what, what the defense do on this, well, you know, what role play was good. So I, because, you know, if I, if I don't do that for me, this is just for me, if I don't do that, you know, I, I forget about it. And, you know, if I want to come back to something, so I don't necessarily have a play card where, which I'm going to change this year. I'm going to try and be disciplined enough to use a, you know, just to script the, the, the different parts of the field, but I'm notorious for forgetting you know, what did the defense do on this? So I'm sitting here constantly while the defense is on the field. I'm, I'm jotting down things, you know, like from our, from our previous series, you know, what are they doing this? How did, how did they cover early? How did they kind of, did they adjust the motion? I'm writing those things down and I'm looking back at it coming back. So I'm notorious for that <laughs> for me. That, that, that's what I always have to have. You know, I'm, I'm constantly writing stuff down uh, just to remind myself, you know, later on in the game, especially if I need it. <laughs> One thing that's helped me with that, because like I said, I had it, I don't know, scripted out what I wanted to do on certain situations. Right. Is when I threw that away with just the wristband that the quarterback has, and started calling off of that. Is I would have somebody with the three by five card in the background and writing down the plays. Right. And then had had a highlighter, and if it's five or better, they highlighted it. Okay. And it, and it helped. You know, and it was it, and it made a three by five card. It was a little bit bigger. The next card, yeah. but they would write down every play I called. There's five or better. They just took the highlighter out and highlighted it. Did you have a coach do that or like another player? I had one of my water girls do it. Oh, okay. Okay. Was that that? Water bottles, anyhow, sitting on the ground waiting to call timeout. So I'm like, hey, here's a clipboard. Just write down exactly what I said or what was on the wristband. If it was red one, you write down red one. <laughs> if <laughs> you know what the play is, just highlight it. For for me for me they would have to learn the signals because I don't I don't yell out at anything so no, they have to understand my hands are going. Well, that, that's a great well, idea. Another kid on the other side holding up red and I'm going like this is two, and she sees the red card she already knows it's two and sometimes I'm saying it out to myself. Give right. me red, give me red, and then both. Okay, so red, I've got two. Jason, then another video idea is training your water girls to read your signals <laughs> yeah. analyze coverage. Yeah. Hey, the so, I, don't, the I don't use water girls because it's a distraction so you know it's kind of like you know, <laughs> that's <laughs> true <laughs> oh lord that's, that's johnny be good coach, coach harvey johnny be good yep. <laughs> there's another movie <laughs> yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but i mean the first year one of my water girls her dad was the head varsity coach and I'd learned his signals, and she looked at me like, your stuff's easier than daddy's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, darling, it is. Because that's when we started doing the wristband stuff. But they would just write down the color and the, and the number off the wristband. Well, I, I've got to get on it because I, I was really put on blast personally a couple weeks ago. You know, I was watching the middle school softball girls play, and the other coach – he must have been the, a football coach as well because he's there with wristbands and he's doing all this stuff with these little six and seven year old or six and seventh grade girls and they're looking they're bunting they're they're doing all this stuff I'm like dude if 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 this man's singling out all that info to these girls I, I gotta get on that level. So coach Robbie, what do you do with that sheet? That that in my back pocket and write on it before no, like, no, no, but but I mean after, after the game, what do you do with it? You, you I mean you look I try and use the same one all year, you know, when you, and you, like, I don't know if Jason said it or not, when the defense has the ball, I actually have to coach linebackers and don't, don't get me wrong. I love coaching linebackers, 
But when the, when we're on defense, I'm basically walking down the sideline thinking, okay, I haven't shown this. They did this to motion. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking notes for myself, and I'm walking up to the girl and saying, okay, what's yellow? I mean, what what's what's golden? What's good on our wristband? And that type of thing. What's been working, so you'll do that. That's that's. So, so I so I go. I was trying to repeat it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not bragging. We didn't really have a great season this year, but one thing I'm proud of is we played a crosstown rival school. <coughs> Excuse me. And we took the opening kickoff and we controlled it until the second quarter. Wow. We we had the ball the whole quarter. Mm -hmm. um, we had a new kid move in right in the middle of the season, and he, I asked him what he played at the other school. And he said I played fullback, and we were in the triple option. Uh, it got me thinking, you know, why not put some triple option in the shotgun? You know, run some dive, run some zone one way, run triple the opposite way. And we controlled the ball the whole quarter. I looked up and the horn's going off. I'm like, Eric, why's the, why's the horn going off? He's like, you had the ball the whole quarter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was talking to Jason a couple, what was a month or two ago. I, I couldn't get, I couldn't get air raid working the way everyone else is having because our run was so poor but because down here it was just if you can't run they're not going to respect the pass so i couldn't get it going i had a guy that could throw i had i had receivers but when we were putting in that that double option not even triple just a fake triple there's games where where we we reopened 11 runs in a row and once you do that you have them in your hand because now they they got eight in the box and then we started picking them apart with passing so all my epic passing stats and passing highlights were after we had killed them with the run that that's what we got because once 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 they were crowding that box the the, the flats were open the, the screens were open verts was open Coach Charlie, you were talking about run speed and shovel or shuffle and it depends on where you're at i don't know but we we kind of and this is a tag off though we run speed option the same way and then we tag it with Utah, where now we have, or Oklahoma, we have the outside speed option, where we also have the inside shovel option. The shovel, oh, shovel pass, yeah. It's the old, it, just like uh, Urban Meyer would run when he was at Utah and Florida yeah, would run. Yeah. Well. And it's just 18 speed option, except now you're pulling that backside guard or tackle, and that back's falling, which was Manning Hernandez. You know, they're just – Fall in there underneath, and it's just so yeah, he could come in like like I could we could just break cheat our slot guy, like, like for me we were doing that anyway we could just yeah, have him cheat in a little bit and then instead of coming in motion as soon as the play starts he's got to come across and then yes just, give, me, give me thirty two seconds I'll roll it up for you if you don't mind that's pretty crazy it, I mean it's the exact it's still eighteen nineteen speed option to our kids. And we just zoned, we tell them to base to zone. And sometimes we'll pull the guard some, it just depends on the blocking rules. Then you could fake us, you could fake a jet off that if you wanted to. Yep. We do, we do. AJ had us running inside zone, opposite side. So you the kids that? don't have to learn anything. Can yep. you see that? Yep. And is that, that. Is, is that H coming in motion? No. Yeah, that's coming in motion because you said you're going to cut the splits. Right. He's running for the show. Yeah. It's, wow. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try that in spring. I'm, I'm going to mess with that. And like and you said, if you pitch in, it. In two backs you know, and have the other back step up and follow. What's nasty is this. You run smash concept, passing concept off of this. <laughs> you put him and you put that H in as a sniffer, though, right? You can, we didn't even tell our kids what to do on that. We just don't line up. Well, how, how, how wide was it? How wide was that age? Because I mean, if he's he's pretty wide out there. I mean, that's gonna he's, he's that's wide, but the, but at our level, kids don't pay attention. Right. Okay. So if we did this from the boundary and ran it to the field, he's going to be cut in anyhow. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Or he's sitting in the boundary because over there the boundary he doesn't have to. But we'd run like smash off of this and have our Z come in and crack like that, and have the quarterback carrying the ball like he's running speed option, but he's reading that. Outside that inside uh, that linebacker over here, he's really if that linebacker comes up now. He knows he's got outside pitch, inside pitch, dump. And it, and so we look like, at it. 
There's nothing much more to tag to. It's, it's so exciting. That that snag, that corner snag, was was money for us as well. And it was, and in my opinion, was based off of the the fact that these guys were were too busy looking for stretch and inside zone and this guy coming to motion is he going to run and we didn't run speed option that much just enough to get him looking at him and and jason like you said it's like they're looking at the motion guys and that eye discipline it's like stealing from a baby well eye discipline on this particular play is they, they see speed options so that outside linebacker thinks hey i've got quarterback corner yeah. thinks i've got pitch safety's like i've got what's left well, they don't ever see the H coming inside. Well, not only that, but he's hiding behind the lineman, too, so you don't even see him. Well, and if you pull the backside guard, now it's power read. Yeah. So you've got the guard leading for the H. You just pitch it inside, and he's gone. There's nobody there. Good stuff. You know, I they do a, do a single show on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you could yeah, and you could throw a pass off that. Yeah, yeah. Like no, it. absolutely. I mean, you draw up a, draw up a little offense just on this one little formation of play. You can do it off that. <laughs> you can do it out of two backs. You can do you can do a lot of stuff off that. Yeah, yeah. there's no package of plays there. Yeah, even out of trips, you know, like you just said, you, you run your motion, run your orbit motion off of that. Yeah, you can do a lot with it. Absolutely. That's true, and you could just throw it. Yeah, that's right. You could either throw it. You could either hand bring the guy, or just throw it out to the player. Oh yeah, wait a minute. Clear <laughs> uh, juices are flowing. Right, well, yeah, can we're, we're, hurry up yeah. through so I can draw some of this shit up? <laughs> All right, we're 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 we're, we're going to stop now because we're already at two hours. I said we. I said we weren't going to go two hours. Yeah, I got to. Hey, we're going to start sooner, guys. <laughs>